This edition of Computer Club Lesson was recorded on November the 28th, 2016. In this edition, we are going to talk all about document creation software. Hello, welcome to Computer Club Lesson. This episode is brought to you by the Binary Guys. The introduction, as always, it's 1 o'clock and it's time to start again. Um, and today uh, we have a, a number of things for you. And uh, right off the bat, I want to talk about something that uh, I ran into over the weekend. Um, in in uh, uh, I was reading up on uh, viruses and stuff, as I'm wont to do over a weekend when I've got nothing to do. Um, and uh, I was reading up on one in particular about ransomware. Now we've talked about ransomware before. That's where something gets a hold of your computer and won't let it go unless you pay the money. Now in your case it was almost ransomware. Almost, yeah. but not quite. Uh, ransomware now takes, takes over all of your files, encrypts them so you can't read them, and uh, demands money to get them back. Wow. That's ransomware. Um, and below that there's another Thing to open it. It's always a long story about selling a book or something. Oh, I don't know about that one. <laughs> I don't know about that one. Medical stuff, you know. Yeah, uh, but that's what ransomware is. Yeah. Now, ransomware has been rampant in the last little while on Facebook. How many do Facebook? Okay, it has been rampant on Facebook, so that's why I want to talk about it a little bit. Um, the uh, the infection is coming in when uh, you click on and download a, an image, a picture. Okay, someone sends you a picture and you click on it knowing that you can download it to your computer. And um, when you download this infected picture, um, the uh, ransomware launches, encrypts all your files and your toast. I cannot help you if that happens. I cannot help you. Uh, I, you, I can't get your stuff back. Um, the, usually the demand for money is about $350, $400. If you are uh, a large institution and this happens to, the demand for money can be 15000 to half a million. Which is what has happened to a number of hospitals in the United States. Uh, they got ransomware into their system and it encrypted everything. Not just some things. Everything. But even if they pay, are they guaranteed to get it back? Well, there is no guarantee. However, um, this kind of ransomware, if you, if you pay, the odds are they will release your files. Because um, this is a lot of money we're talking about. We're talking about uh, files that are extremely important. Word would soon get around that if you pay the money, you don't get nothing. Nobody's going to pay the money. So, um, for the most part, if you pay the money, you get your files back. Now, in the case of a private computer, I'm sorry your stuff is gone unless your life hangs in the balance. I would just say, it's gone, start over. Your pictures, your music, your letters, whatever, gone, I would say start over. Unless your life hangs in the balance, and in your case as folk, I don't think that's quite the case. So, um, that's what I wanted to talk about today. This stuff is going around on Facebook and some other uh, social networks like Instagram, especially pictures on Instagram that are uploaded by strangers. Yes? I didn't quite understand downloading. If I just, somebody's got a pretty picture of cats and I look at it, does that you If thing? you look at it, you're fine. Oh. But if you click on it and it wants to download, it opens up a dialog box saying, I'm going to download this for you. 
No, it, it just rolls lots of pictures. Of yeah. That's what I'm thinking yeah. Of. Uh, but that's that's not the case. If you click on it or you right click on it and tell it to save as. Oh. Okay, okay. Um, but if you, if you, a lot of times in uh, Facebook, if you click on something, you're asking it to download to your computer. Now that will, uh, that will launch a dialog box saying, where do you want to save this? I'm going to save it for you, but where do you want to save it? And what do you want to name it? At that point, at that point, you have an opportunity to understand what's happening here. And that opportunity is this that you will be given a file name and you will be given a file extension if and a file size the file extension and the file size are the most important things to look at okay in every case of a download look at the file extension and the file size now when I say extension what am I saying I'm saying that um, the file extension is what tells the computer what program to open to look, view the picture, or play the music, or view the document. .doc is a file extension. .jpg is a file extension. .svg is a file extension, and it's among the ones that are infected. The other thing about this is the is the size of the file it is very seldom above 75 kilobytes now I think I said last week that 75 kilobytes is barely enough to save uh, one line of a document in notepad okay it's extremely tiny it's not much at all but it's enough that um, the computer will try and launch what it is it's looking at. And these kinds of files can be launched in the background by the bad guy, and that's what locks your computer. It goes out to the internet, gets more files, or a bigger file, a better file that hides from you, and downloads and installs. So that's what we're looking at here for these uh, what we call crypto lockers there's lots of names for them but they encrypt your stuff and they lock it yes uh, after we accept that we lost our pictures and our files and that sort of thing is your computer okay to operate Something no you like really that? should you really should uh, have it looked at yeah. uh, and uh, do a malware scan and a, and a clean out on it because the stuff may sit there yeah. in the background for a little while now, um, I have heard through colleagues of mine that work in the industry that they have had some luck, not much, but some luck in recovering files from a locked out computer once they get rid of the, the crypto locker software and all of this stuff is still encrypted. <coughs> Windows computers um, have a system whereby um, they have what's called a shadow volume. Now when we say volume, what we're talking about is your hard drive. Okay, so your volume has a name. C colon backslash or it has a name. My computer, C colon backslash, that's the volume name. Okay, so that's the name of your hard drive. But in Windows, there's what's called the shadow volume. Now, the shadow volume is hidden away. You can't see it. I can see it. I have software so that I can see it. I install the software and the shadow volume appears. In some cases, the shadow volume is not contaminated. And I can go in and have a look and see if I can get your pictures back. That's, my colleagues have said that they have had some luck with it, but 
I'm going to tell you now that if you have crypto locker, your stuff is gone. Get used to that whole idea. Your stuff is gone. All right, on that cheery note, <laughs> uh, James is now going to talk to you about uh, Notepad and WordPad. We're going to we're going to go through. Um, Notepad and WordPad. I know we we did it uh, last last year, uh, but we're going to do it again. It's always good to go through these things every now and again as a reminder of what you can and cannot do. And um, I would say to you that uh, when James is finished with you talking to you about what you can and cannot do in Notepad, do a little more thinking. If James can do this in Notepad or WordPad, can I do this in another type of program? And the answer is yes. Word. Word. Uh, but I'm thinking about things like how you manipulate pictures. Okay? So if you can manipulate text in WordPad with um, saving something, and copying something and pasting something you can do exactly the same kinds of things in different kinds of programs They're, they are available to you so with that in mind James you're up oh, goody. <laughs> <laughs> can I have your hat? <laughs> <laughs> alright so with that with what he said, I'm just going to throw out, I think I know what we're going to talk about um, next week. Because um, you should back up your data often. Uh, so we're probably going to talk about backing up, um, how to back up, and what's the best way to do it. Um, but in any case, I'm going to talk about Notepad and WordPad. Now, every computer, Windows computer, has both um, naturally without any installation. And for Notepad, you would just go to Cortana, oops, or the Ask Me Anything, the search bar, and just look for Notepad. So I'm going to click that. And Notepad is very basic with what it can do. You can type, you can do numbers. Also, let me just change the format for you guys. Um, so, you can change the font and format to anything you like. You can do the, what kind of uh, font it is, like, uh, Cooper, or is that Copper? One of the two. There's grilled cheese uh, what? font. <laughs> there it is. Grilled cheese. BTN BLK. It looks ugly. <laughs> so, I'll then just. Uh, 48. You guys can probably read that. The margins, the words are not where I thought they were. I have trouble getting in line on the paper. Well, on Notepad, I wouldn't recommend too much um, printing from Notepad as it can go on and on and on and on. Yeah, that's what it seemed to do. Yeah. yeah. Which, there is something you can do for that, so I'm just going to put this on. Well, WordPad be the same. Uh, well, where is calamari or whatever? Uh, that, there it is. And I'll just make it regular, please. Okay. So you guys could probably read that now, right? So, uh, as I showed, you can change their font size, the whether it's going to be bold uh, or italic, which... Uh, makes them slanted. Um, 
all in the format. Now, what I want to uh, show is w word wrap. So, normally on Notepad, if I just hold down the J key, it will go on for eternity. But if I do format word wrap, it cuts off and goes to the next line so you don't have to go chasing after after text. So one, now once I go to the end, it will go down to the next line. And that's very useful because... Um, Did you have to hold it down? Or? No, I'm just holding down the J key uh, to show I could type faster like this, but um, it just wrap, um, wraps the text to the next line instead of going for affinity. Um, now, you can uh, do two things with notepads. And the first one is they're both the same thing, but uh, you can add a time and date underneath edit. So if you go to edit in your menu bar and time and date, it will add the time that you uh, that it currently is with the date. And therefore you can make a log. Now you can also do this with F5 as well. It will make a date. But what I'm going to show you is how to make a journal automatically with Notepad. So I'm going to close this. And I'm going to find Notepad. Well, actually, I'll just do it on desktop for now. So I'm going to right click and go to New Text Document. Now this is Notepad. And if I put in on the top line dot log in full capitals and then save, now every time you open up that document, it will put down the time. So, um, so you can make a journal like doing lesson. and save out again. I don't need to type in them anymore. And then when I open it up again, a new time. So you can make a journal of today I did this and that this. The next day it will still do it. As long as you have dot log, it will automatically put in the date every next line. And it's very <laughs> useful. Now it this is what I write in this time. This is what I'm going to write starting at this time. Um, now, you can't do many things with text documents or um, a notepad. Because if I change the font in this document, if I make a new document, it will carry over. Um, so instead of changing per text, it's changing the whole program. Uh, I'll show you later on um, in WordPad if you change to a 30 plus font size. Um, you open up a new text document, it will go back to 12, but the other one's still at 30. This one will only keep it at 1. So you can't have too much for our... Uh, for our <laughs> the word that I'm trying to say... <laughs> Uh, and you can't even have um, diversity in the text itself as also yay we have heat I think or a fan <laughs> whatever no it's too loud about as loud as that as actually <laughs> and Wait, what was this? <laughs> I had a brain fart. <laughs> Can I ask you a question? Yeah. Um, 
question. Yeah. Can you make that private with the security number or something, or is it always anybody can look when they open your computer? There are things that you can do to files to hide them. We don't um, recommend it because we don't recommend it. You'll you'll forget yes, and wonder where it went. You have to. You I'll have forget. To know what you're doing. But you can, in Windows, and, and most every other computer, there, there is a way to hide files from people so that you know they're there, you know how to get at them, but no one else would guess. Okay? They can be done, but we're never going to show you how to do it. <laughs> That's all right, I just wondered. Um, so much for that. Yeah. <laughs> so... In most documents, uh, document programs, you can make bold letters, like a bold word and italic word there, and have this text be 12. And Notepad, as I said, it's super basic, so it's either everything's at what you set, or nothing's at what you set. <laughs> um... So yeah, you can do your basic copy, cutting, and pasting. You can also find um, find text. So I want to know what did I do on one colon eighteen for a time. What do you mean you cannot find it? It's right there. Hmm. All right then, screw you. <laughs> Let's try this again. There it is. It was already at the bottom, that's why. So, now every time it's 118 on this document, I can see, oh yes, I did this at 118 on this date, and it's very useful to just make a journal, and you can save this and print this if you'd like. And yeah. Okay, you've got one set up, right? Say it's for your medical record. Now your grandfather wants one for his medical record. You can just do a separate one? Yes. Yeah, you can do a sep separate log. The, the only things that you can't really do is change the font size between them yeah. or anything. Yeah. Like, I can probably show it if I have both of them here. I'll just put that one there. Make a good old fashioned new one. Any minute now, thank you. Another text document. Put this one here. Now, if my theory is correct, if I change the font size, it will change it on both of them. Because it's stupid that way. Or not. So when you keep them both open, it doesn't. Uh, try F5. That's a refresh. Oh, yeah, that's right. No, F5 is uh, text. <laughs> I just said that. <laughs> I don't think there is a refresher for here. Um, so, the, I guess the only way you can keep them, probably if I close this and open it back up. No? Okay. So never mind then. Apparently, when you have both of them open, it can change. Uh, you can change the fonts, but if you if I closed it and then changed it, both of them will be changed. But can you put dot log there? Oh yeah. A whole different uh, scenario for the other person. Yep. Now you have to make sure it's capital. capital. And save. I got to save it with a different name. I did. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. So yeah. You've got two different logs, but they're both well, called the same thing. So. Yeah. The the first time around, you would uh, you would put in your dot log and do a save as. Okay. Save as Kathy dot txt. Right. Now the, the way. Next time you open one and make a new one, you would do a save as Bob dot txt. Now you have two different Separate. logs. Okay. Now. Uh, the way I'm just doing it now, 
the computer naturally changes the name. So you have to put TXT though. Yes. TXT. TXT. Yeah. TXT. Um, that tells the computer to open this document with Notepad. Yeah. So here's the new log. Now, as I said, the um, when the way I was doing it with right-click new text me um, text document, it if I because I didn't change the name of the last one, it would have had the same name, but it automatically puts two. This is the second one. Um, I don't know yeah. if you guys could see that, but that says text document. This says text document two. Yeah. 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 Um. So the computer naturally just says, oh, this is a different one. But yeah, you can also just change them anyways. But yeah, you can have two separate logs. You can have as many logs as you want for as many people. Um, now that pretty much covers um, notepads uh, um, other than the copying and pasting all over the place. Um, but yeah, that really covers uh, covers it. Um, you can do the save as from file, open, make a new one. Or you can just close out of it to save. Now, WordPad is a step above Notepad, but a step below any other document programs that you would normally buy, like Word, uh, Word or LibreOffice, OpenOffice. So WordPad, if I can spell it right, there we go. Again, searching for it in Cortana, because I don't know where he puts it. So this looks more like an actual uh, document program that you would normally see. So in here you can again change your font type to Broadway. Broadway sounds amazing. And again I'll put it to 48 so we can all see. Now, that's, well I'm just changing the font size so you can see what I'm doing. <coughs> but now the on home everything that you need to use is on there. So, your font type, your font size, um, these are arrow keys for if you just want to gradually make them bigger or smaller. Um, you can do your uh, indents, you can make them centered, to the left, to the right, full, good old paragraph. Uh, you can also add the uh, paragraph is next to full. Can you get rid of that, please? So you have your left, <laughs> left, centered, right, um, using the full page, and paragraph is is right here. This centered the line in the middle, and it makes it. Yeah, center and makes it so it yeah, goes out like this. Um, you can also change your line spacing so you can have a double space line if you're writing an essay for whatever reason. Or you can, as I do it so I have a lot more room, completely get rid of it. And you can add pictures. Notepad, you can't add pictures. It's very bare bones. Um, again, you can add your date and time and how you want it. We'll do it the good old, it's Monday, November 28th. There that is. I mean, just, there we go. You can, now what I do, because it gives you, and make sure you have like a two inch border around the text so you're in right in the middle of the document what I always do so I have a lot more room is file page setup 
and here you can make it so it goes in a landscape or whatnot but what I typically do is just get rid of that get rid of this make it all three and two and you can have the print page number if you want so you know how it goes in order Hit okay I and now I can use a lot more room in the document but be careful with that because if you want to print it your printer may decide oh, yeah. what the margin should be that's what happens to me it just changes from your printer will decide print. what yeah. the margin should be so if you go full page width like James just did yeah. well I'm not okay. full page I'm, well, I'm like that oh. that far yeah. <laughs> but as full as it can go and then you go to print that document, you will lose what's on either side because your printer decided yeah. what the margin should be. Yeah. Right. Can we change the printer <coughs> to make it safe? Sometimes you can, sometimes you can't. Now, yeah. that, that doesn't always happen. Like, again, if you put it to a certain degree, That's the computer, well. the computer keep, keeps it. Um, typically, the way I do it with... Um, just getting rid of everything after three and two, um, it keeps keeps it on your printer at least and mine. So when I print out my uh, notes, I save paper and have a lot less paper. Instead of a paper this big, I have a paper that's only too long. Um, oh yeah, you can add pictures. Uh, we'll add a screenshot here. There we go. You can resize this picture as well. Um, you can even, wherever it is, actually I don't think you can do this in WordPad. Um, but you can do your bullets so you know what we're doing. I always, if you read my notes that I used to have because I no longer make notes, um, I would have bullets, I would have bold things there, bold things here, which are up here. You can bold, italic, or underline. Now, as I said, italic makes slightly like the Leaning Tower of Pisa slightly drunk or you can bold italic for bigger effect I know you can't tell because of the thing I'm on it's already bolded or you can underline so How do you it's right next to the yeah, eye B I beef bold I for italic and U for underline all underneath the font if I, I mean, type. If I just click on underline and then keep typing. Yeah. Oh, you don't have to or, or you can highlight the text that you do want and say, yeah, I want this underlined. Oh. I want this to be underlined. I don't want it to be italic anymore. Um, you can even change the font size of different text, so you make that one super tiny. Or if we want to get ridiculous here, we can make it a lot bigger. You can even change the color to red or whatever color you'd like. Um, you can even cross things out if you so need to. I don't know what's the point of crossing things out in a text document because you can just delete, delete it. <laughs> but okay, you can t you can strike things through if you don't want to delete, unless it has some purpose I have no clue about. It does have a purpose, <laughs> but um, we're not going to discuss it too much. It has a purpose. My kids use it sarcastically. Yes. <laughs> what it's doing, when you cross things out, uh, but you leave them in the document, 
It's telling the it's telling the reader. I was thinking about this, but I'm not going to tell you. Yeah. 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 But yet I still saying. told you. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking that you were a jerk, but I'm not going to tell you that. And so you cross out the word jerk. <laughs> Now again, you can do your uh, good old find. So I want to find every time I did JK. Find next. There's the JK. There's another one. I did a lot of them. Um, now I, I went over find before with the keyboard shortcuts of Control F. Now most keyboard shortcuts I didn't mention like a month ago now. Um, you can still do in both Notepad and WordPad. Um, now, not, normally WordPad does have uh, Word Wrap on automatically as you want to print it and wants to look good. You can uh, turn that off or uh, wrap to window which then essentially turns it into notepad but with better graphics and then better features you can zoom zoom out if you need to or zoom in and you can change how it measures its units <laughs> there, you can really do a lot of things uh, more I'm just trying to get through most of them uh, again, you can do your save as, or save, open, new, pretty much all the same. Um, I don't think you can do the dot info trick with WordPad. And that pretty much covers it, unless you got something I should probably mention. Yeah? This looks like my Microsoft Word. Yes and yes, yes and no. Because, like I said, WordPad is a step down below that. Mm -hmm. While it can, it's um, with WordPad, it's called a rich text document, which just means you can uh, do bolds, you can do colors, you can do other things with um, document. Uh, or Microsoft Word, uh, you can have the word fancy word art for I want this title to be gold and curves and uh, other neat wonderful things that people in school used to do. There, there really is unless there really is no point to getting Microsoft Office if you are going to get a better. Thing like LibreOffice or OpenOffice or um, Microsoft Office, it's best to use it uh, use a free version of it because, as Grandpa always says, unless you madly use this these programs, you won't barely use ten percent of what it's capable of doing. So really, if you want a document, use WordPad or LibreOffice. If you want it to be fancy. As we all like fancy. Um, you can also add pie charts and whatnot with Microsoft Word. I think LibreOffice can do that and you can go into that rowboat. Yes? Okay, you had a ruler up there. Yeah. How do we change that ruler for the margins? You know what that mean? was in view and I think I actually... Uh, first of all, let me get rid of... Okay. Yeah. So you can change the margins by going to view and um, just it, how it measures so you can do inches. So Will that change what print to see stuff? No, not really. It, it, it's just so like if I have it on inches, we all know um, a standard piece of paper is eight and a quarter and eleven. Um, 
so that just makes that easier instead of just centimeters where you have to, okay, how many inches are in, how many centimeters are in an inch? Like if I wanted it just in the center there. Yeah, um. Certain column or whatever. Yeah. Yeah, you can. Oh, you just click on that and drag it? Yeah, you can drag them over. Now the top one, um, top one only does what line you're actually on and the bottom line does everything. So if I do the bottom line, whatever my mouse, my cursor is, it will only move that line. But with um, the bottom one, it will move everything in the kitchen sink. Um, the, other, uh, the word that James sort of left out here um, um, is WYSIWYG. What you see is what you get. And in WordPad, WYSIWYG is operational. What you see is what you get. And so when you do all of this formatting of the page, what you print out is what you see is what you get. That's not the case in Notepad. Notepad, you have to be very careful about where you place letters and words. If you want, if you want them to be placed properly in a document, you have to you have to do it um, by hand, not with format. But in a WordPad, you can do this formatting automatically, and it will give you what you see is what you get. WYSIWYG. Yeah, with Notepad it is a bit of, you have to know, you have to pretty much test it, write a sentence, print that sentence, and if the sentence gets deleted or is wrapped, you know, oh, this is where it cuts off, I can maneuver from here. But as I said, document is more of a uh, uh, WordPad is more of a uh, actual document for printing purposes. Notepad is for is Notepad isn't really for printing. It's just for keeping it on the computer, going to it for any any notes or whatever. Wordpad is I want to type this out, type out a, a nifty paper and print it out and share. So everyone has a phys physical copy with. I trained myself to preview my print too, to have yeah. look at it before I print it. Again, Notepad doesn't have preview. No. Um, you can do it in, in print, in WordPad. Yeah. So pretty much that's what I'm going to get if I print this. Looks lovely. I get a A plus. <laughs> an A plus on it for effort. Now, all right, so yeah, we'll talk about ba backing up, hopefully, if I remember. Um, that pretty much uh, covers WordPad and um, Notepad. I keep getting them confused. I just want to say document. <laughs> yes? Password protected document. Again, same thing like Notepad. You can, uh, you can. We're not going to show you how, because if you a forget the password, or b uh, forget you did whatever to it, and you can't tell us what you did, okay. well, <laughs> it's gone. <laughs> um. That and I can't even remember from the top of my head how to do it in the first place. <laughs> so with that, uh, Graham's going to talk about I think uh, Google Docs and LibreOffice or whatever you have time for. Whatever we have time for, because I was a windbag. <laughs> okay, Google Docs. The best thing about Google Docs 
is that it is um, a stripped down version of Microsoft Office for free. It's a low, low price, so free. There's yeah, lots. Yeah, there's there's lots of things that you can do um, with Google Docs. I guess that's only a, a on Windows, ten. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, no. Google Docs is in any version of Windows. It's part of your Google account. Okay. Uh, once you've got an account in Google. Um, you can go to Google Docs and you can make documents as though you were making them in Microsoft Office or any other advanced document maker. Well, if you don't have an account, you can get one. Okay? If you don't have an account, you can get one. Let me just quickly, um, I'm not signed into this, so let me just quickly show you. Um, here's uh, a Google page. Now I'm not signed in, I know that because my picture's not up in the right corner. But if you click on sign in, um, in here you should get a prompt, um, sign in with a different account, and <coughs> you can add an account. You want to be able to add an account to, um, to Google and once you've done that you're, you're making a new account for yourself. Okay? You can have as many as you want, as many na names as you can dream up. Yeah. Uh, by the way, once you add an account uh, and Google accepts it, uh, you have a new Gmail address, you can make Google Docs, you can um, save all kinds of things from Google to your accounts. You could be on Google Plus, which was a train yeah. wreck. Yeah, <laughs> uh, Google Plus was a, was a train wreck. He's right there. There are all kinds of things that you can do you can in Google. Well, you have a new, so then you still don't have the old Gmail address anymore? Oh yeah, you still have it. You can log into any Google account you want. You want. If you have five of them, if you've tricked Google into thinking you have five, you can log into every single one of them. Is that like, you know, if you want to sell something Uncle Gigi and I don't want to see it in my Hotmail account forevermore, I could make an, a Google account. Exactly. Once I've sold something. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's wonderful. <laughs> exactly. That they are good for all kinds of things like that. All right. We're back to uh, Google Docs. And you basically have, uh, now this is, a, um, this is a template for something. I'm just showing you this as a template because it shows you the toolbar up here. This is the toolbar for Google Docs and it does a lot, most of the things that you would expect from a toolbar from a program, okay? You can open a document that you have, you can rename it, you can make copies of it. You can down one, you can download your finished document to your computer. Now, the thing to remember about Google Docs is they are on the cloud. They're on Google. They're out there. They are not here. They are not local. But once you've finished a document in Google Docs, you can download it to here, to local, to your own computer. Or okay. any computer you want. Or any computer you want. Uh, the nice thing about that is let, let us just say that you've made a Google document and you take a trip to Zanzibar. If you need the document at a computer that you're playing with in Zanzibar, download it there. Okay? You don't have to have all of your documents with you in a computer. You can keep them on the cloud. Out there. Okay? So that's, that's uh, the, the file part of it. Here's the edit part of it. You can copy, you can paste, you can undo and redo anything you've done here. 
Um, you have a clipboard so that if you highlight something and copy it, it goes to a clipboard on the cloud, not necessarily locally on the computer, but it's a clipboard on the cloud. Um, and so you can copy stuff and paste it, you can cut stuff and paste it, you can copy it from other web pages. So you find a picture on another web page, you can copy it and paste it into your document. You can do that. This gets even neater. Okay, so under the view mode of uh, of this, um, you're really you're looking at the print layout of your document. Okay, here's here's your uh, your margins. Okay, uh, and all of that. Let me just uh, un uncheck that. It's unchecked, and so um, I'm going to refresh it. Oops, F5 is refresh. So Office, everything is on your computer? Pretty and, much. And, uh, and that, everything's on the cloud? Yeah, pretty much. Everything is there. But then how you get, when you need it, how do you get it off the cloud? You download it. You download it and put it in like this PC. Yeah, and it'll show yeah, up there yeah. The You'll download it to your own PC. Now, um, as James mentioned, and I will mention again, this document maker, for you home gamers, you will probably not use 10% of the options that are available to you in this program on the cloud, okay? But now Microsoft doesn't want to sell you a CD or a DVD with Microsoft on it, it wants you to buy a subscription to their cloud service at 90 bucks a year. At 90 bucks a year, they want you to buy. Folk, this is free. The low, low price of not a dime. Still too expensive, man. I don't know if I can buy free. Can I, if I download that in Zanzibar, then do I have to leave my documents on their computer? Nope. Nope. You can delete them as soon as, soon as you download them, they and they're download. gone. Does it download it off mine when I get home? No. no. No, no. It's you're downloading from the cloud. Yeah. If you save this document in the cloud, it's in the cloud forever, no matter where on the face of the earth you are. You can get at it if you have a computer that will connect to the internet. Or you can get at one that will connect to the internet. Log into your Google account, and there it is. And, then it. and you can delete it from any local computer that you want. Um, I'm just going to uh, go through a couple more of these. There, there is the, uh, the uh, format that, that we use. Um, as James said, there's bold, italics, underline, strike through that we talked about. Um, the styles of font size and paragraph styles and all of that are here, as you would find them in Microsoft Office or LibreOffice or any other Office suite that you <coughs> might have. What you have with this that you may not have with something like LibreOffice is a spell checker. Okay? If you're not a great speller like me, spell check is on all the time. And you can define the rules for spell checking that they, that, uh, they are uh, either uh, English, British, or American. Okay? Color, C-O-L-O-R. American. Color, C-O-L-O-U-R. No, you have that backwards. Yeah. Whatever. <laughs> Spell checker. <laughs> but there's a U yeah. in the English-Canadian version of color. Yeah. 
Okay? So you can tell it what version you want to use. How? I can't by, defining, by defining the spell check. You click on it and you define the spell checker as either American or British. Okay? Because I spell English, obviously, and it underlines it in a little red line. Yeah, it's telling you you spelled it wrong. Yeah, well, it didn't. <laughs> you can, um, by the way, you can, you can right click on it and say, this is correct, put it in the dictionary. <laughs> And the next time you, you spell it with a U, it will not give you a red line. It's in the dictionary. So right click on the word that, that uh, the computer thinks is wrong. And there is an entry there for put it in the dictionary. When you right click, oh yeah, that's there. So <laughs> one of the other things you have here uh, with Google Docs is help. Help is always good. Help is in every program that you ever want to buy or download. It's there. Help me. So there is help with Google Docs and you can report problems and all of that stuff. You can even investigate the keyboard shortcuts um, in Google Docs as you can with uh, any other document maker document um, program. Does dot log work in? No, no. Dot log only works in Notepad. Notepad. It's a very special piece of Notepad. Notepad, as James said, is something to make notes to yourself. Note to self. Also, one thing I forgot to mention about Notepad, which is why this works, is Notepad is a special kind of program that can even be used as options for or like settings, or um, they can be used for any anything that underneath the sun. Like I play a game that you can mod, mo uh, modify, modify, and you can change those settings in Notepad. Yeah. Note Notepad is also used for programming your computer. Okay, um, I told you that uh, when you want to save something, uh, note to self, you save it as note to self dot txt. But you can also save is as dot reg. Now, you have to know what you're doing because you're making a change to the registry. When you change, when you put in dot reg, if you make that change and you didn't do it right, you've made a brick. It will write it will write to the registry of your computer and it will change it completely and forever and you will have to reload Windows. You don't want to do that. The other one that James just mentioned is dot B A K and there is also a dot B A T. These are also ways to program your computer to do things on command. Okay? So Notepad is used for all of those, but for you home gamers, it's .txt. That's the only thing you should use. Okay, so that takes care of uh, Google Docs. In this instance, um, what you, um, the other thing that you can use Google Docs for is uh, there is a, a Google Docs for um, um, Excel, a spreadsheet. Okay, so you can you can find a spreadsheet um, for um, I don't see it here. It's probably going to be in the nine squares, if, if anywhere. Yeah, I'm not going to go looking for it right now, but it is there um, that you can make a spreadsheet. And it works exactly the same way as a Microsoft spreadsheet does, or a spreadsheet from OpenOffice or uh, from uh, LibreOffice. Exactly the same thing. You can also make a presentation, as you would with presentation software. Um, this is just Google's office. This this is Google's office, and they've given it to you for free uh, with 
with an account. Okay, so when you have an account, you can get at all of this good stuff. Well, what cloud am I on when I'm in LibreOffice? If the little cloud icon comes on, then do their things go to a cloud as well? No, no. Oh, they don't. Oh, okay. No. LibreOffice is local to your computer. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Um, as with many other um, local programs that you can download and install, they are local to your computer. Um, there is no program that you can as install to make a Google Doc on the cloud. Okay? No. That's okay. Thank I you mean, so much. There, there are ways to save them to the cloud. They're a bit convoluted, but you can. I've done it before. I'm not going to show you how because it's a bit convoluted. Might as well just be on a computer. Yeah. Okay. So, any other quick questions? It's 2 o'clock now, and uh, any other quick questions about Google Docs? If not, we'll get this up for you onto uh, YouTube as quickly as we can, and thank you so much. That's Computer Club lesson for today. Thank you so much for watching. Bye-bye.